Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have x minus 4 to the power x plus 3 equals x minus 4 to the power x plus 5. And we're going to be solving for x values. I think we can talk about real and complex values at the same time, but let's go ahead and see how we can handle these kinds of problems. First of all, one of the things that you should notice is that we have an equation with the same base. So we have two exponentials with the same base, in other words. So can we just safely say that their exponents are equal? Well, that would lead to a problem because if you think about it, if x plus three is equal to x plus five, then x cancels out and we end up with three equals five, which doesn't make sense at all, right? So we can't really directly do that. So what should we do instead? Maybe we should approach this problem a little differently. So whenever you have something like a to the power b equals a to the power c, obviously b equals c is not the only option. So what else can, uh, can we have? Let's take a look. Uh, let's look at special cases. For example, since the exponents cannot be equal when the bases are equal in this case, we kind of have to think about some special numbers such as one, zero and negative one. What does that mean? For example, if the base is zero, then zero to the power a equals zero to the power b, even when a and b are different because zero to the power any number is equal to zero, right? With one exception, zero to the power zero equals one. Did you know that? I made a video, you can go ahead and check it out. Anyways, so of course, in this case, we need to make sure that the exponents aren't zero, which they can't be at the same time, by the way, but that's a possibility. What's another possibility? Another possibility is that if the bases are one, then one to any power is also one, which is good because one to the power A can be one to the power B, where A and B are different. So that's also covered. What about the negative one? That's the best. If you have negative one at the base, then you do need even or odd powers on different sides. What I mean by that, for example, let's say you have negative one to the power four, that cannot equal negative one to the power seven, because this would be one, this would be negative one. Make sense? They have to be the same kind, the parity. In other words, they're both even or both odd. But the good thing about this is that x plus three and x plus five differ by two. So that's already satisfied. So let's go ahead and take a look at each case without further ado and see how that plays out. So I'm gonna start with zero because zero is kind of like interesting. So suppose, let's just say first case, x minus four is equal to zero, which implies x equals four. If x is four, then we have zero to the power three and zero to the power five. Obviously they are equal, so x equals four is a valid solution. Awesome. And then the second case, the base being one. If x minus four is equal to one, that means x is equal to five, but is that a valid solution? Yes, because if you have, if you replace x with five, you get one to the power eight and one to the power 10. And of course they're equal. Good, x equals five is another valid solution. Wow, so far we found two solutions. And then we're just gonna check the negative one case. What if x minus four is equal to negative one from here? x becomes a three. So if x is three, then we get negative one to the power six and negative one to the power eight. And they're both equal to one, so they're equal, which means x equals three is another solution. Now, here's the million dollar question. Are there any complex solutions? Let's go ahead and try to find out. But I wanna show you an alternative way to approach this problem hopefully maybe that, that could be considered the second method I don't know you can decide but let's go ahead and take a look at it from another angle now since we have this equality x minus 4 to the power x plus 3 equals x minus 4 to the power x plus 5 and actually you know what I'm going to switch sides here and put the 5 on this side because x plus 5 is bigger than x plus 3 
I want to keep it on that side. And now I want to divide both sides by x minus 4 to the power x plus 3. Of course, I need to make an assumption that x minus 4 cannot be 0 because you don't want to divide by 0. It's very, very problematic. So make sure x does not equal 4 in this case. Because we already covered that, right? I mean, x equals 4 is a solution for sure. We know it. Let's just say, let's look for solutions for which x does not equal 4. Okay? So we can do this division. But when you divide, something interesting happens because we have the same base. So we can subtract the exponents. And when we do subtract the exponents, we get 2. And on the right-hand side, we get 1. Nice. This gives us two things. Either x minus 4 is equal to 1 or x minus 4 is equal to negative 1. From here, we get x equals 5 or x equals 3, which is what we got before, but just an alternative way to approach it. So you don't have to do it like case by case. What if, you know, the base is 1, so on and so forth. So this is kind of like a more solid approach, in my opinion. But you can disagree with that. And of course, x equals 4 is already covered, because if x equals 4, then we have a solution. So we get this exact same solution. So do you think, are there any other real solutions besides these? I doubt it, but, you know, again, if you find some, let us know. So let's go ahead and take a look at the possibility of finding some complex solutions. Are we able to find complex solutions? First of all, let me tell you that this, if you expanded it, you can kind of write this as x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 1, and then x squared minus 8x plus 15 equals 0. And from here, obviously, x minus 3 times x minus 5. Negative 3 and negative 5 are the numbers you're looking for when you're factoring this with a sum of negative 8, of course. And from here, again, we get the exact same solutions. Of course, that's the result of the same equation. So we get a quadratic. But x equals 4 is not covered in this case because, again, it was, um, it was covered in the original equation. Now, is it possible to get something different from here, like some complex solutions. Well, as you know, by the fundamental theorem of algebra, is that what it's called? You, an nth degree polynomial equation can have n complex roots, no more than that. So we already got the solutions. So this quadratic cannot found, uh, have more than two solutions. But what, what would happen if we wrote it as follows, like replace the one with e to the power 2 pi and i, and then square root both sides, looking at both cases of the square root, like you can say, okay, x minus 4 is equal to plus minus e to the power 2 pi and i, and then we can kind of add 4 to both sides, 4 plus minus e to the power, wait a minute, did I forget to cut in half? Yeah, I was supposed to cut this in half, which should give me plus minus e to the power pi and i. Now, what would happen if n is equal to 0, you would get 1. If n is equal to 1, you would get negative 1. And again, this would not give you any solutions besides the ones you found. Because that's it. This is a quadratic. You can only get two solutions. So we have a total of three solutions, which is 3, 4, and 5. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.